Hi and welcome back to Bon Voyage Cruise Travel, your go-to and trusted source for all things cruise related. Today I'm in Sydney, Australia, fresh off the brilliance of the seas, a Royal Caribbean ship. I've been on a Trans-Pacific cruise that we stopped in Sydney. I will be spending 24 hours here and I'm ready to dive into the heart of this vibrant city and show you my whirlwind 24-hour solo adventure right here in Sydney, Australia. I found a super convenient luggage storage solution through Bounce. It's making my journey around Sydney really easy and I'd like to share some information about that. So let's get started. And you know, so far I haven't had to exchange any money at all. I've just been using credit cards, but it's 1.5, say 1.6 to one is what I'm trying to say. Just so you know, the circular key is right from the, I mean, the ship is there. And then I just had to walk this way and around. After disembarking from my cruise at 9 a.m., I faced the common traveler's dilemma. Early arrival, but a late hotel check-in. But I didn't have to worry because right across from the hop-on, hop-off bus booth, I found a handy solution. Luggage storage at the City Extra 24-hour restaurant. And I found this by using an app called Bounce to securely store my luggage for eight Australian dollars per bag per day. So the big bus is at wharf three and it's exactly right there. The red, the red roof is where you let your luggage off. But the cruise is to the right and then the big bus is to the left. The Harbor Cruise, it goes out here and it goes over to Darling Bay. It goes over to Watson Bay and to um, Manly Beach, up out over here. So that was, I, I enjoyed that a lot. And so that was part of the cruise itself, the cruise experience. But there is a ferry from right here that goes to Manly Beach. There's a slow one that you can take and it takes its time to get over there. It's just over here. And then there's an, also like a, an express shuttle that goes faster. And I was talking to a couple and what they did was they just went to Manly Beach over here got off, found a restaurant, and had fish and chips for lunch. So that's how they spent their day. And you know, because they're, they're Australian and they've been here before, but I think it's good to do this once, once around just to see, you know, the surrounding areas and you can see where things are located. The um, shuttle, I mean, the cruise also stops at the zoo. So if you were planning on going to the zoo, it's over here somewhere. So that's another plus, but whether or not you need to buy the hop on hop off bus package, you could probably get away with just a cruise if you're just wanting an out on the water experience. I enjoyed this myself, but I don't think I need it for two days. If you're able to buy a 24 hour pass in the cruise and get off your ship, get on the cruise, go around there, do the hop on hop off bus, that's pretty much most of your afternoon. And then just walk around and see what's going on. And then come over here in the evening they have a la laser show. It's such a people watching place. I can imagine this place on New Year's, how much fun that would be because they do fireworks off of this bridge. Yeah, so that's my thoughts on the Hop On Hop Off Plus. I think it ended up costing me $66 for a 24 hour, uh, sorry, a 48 hour experience. I forgot I just been made here. Started off my day at the Sydney Harbor Cruise. I booked this through my ship. I bought a day of Wi-Fi, ensuring I didn't miss anything upon arrival. I wanted all my tickets ready to go. So I purchased a hop on, hop off bus and the Sydney Harbor Cruise was a component I added. So I bought a two day pass and you can have a beautiful view and there's lots of spots to eat. They stop at all kinds of places. Darling Harbor has lively lunch spots and there's lots of serene waters all around us. This experience is a must do for every traveler and you can see why. The whole Sydney Harbor cruise 
from beginning to end takes two hours if you don't get off, but we were required to get off at around 12 o'clock because they were taking a lunch break. So I had 45 minutes in Darling Harbor and I enjoyed looking around. Watson Bay, a little beach there. I would say this is a super easy port to navigate. It's really a piece of cake. So if you're worried about getting to the airport, it's super easy. If you're worried about like finding something to do for a day, it's like I said, I just hopped on. I booked this all online. It's a nice way to spend the day. Next, I hopped on the hop on hop off bus with the two day pass in hand, which by the way, I think one day is more than enough. I'm exploring the Sydney's iconic sites. The bus is a great way to get your bearings, but since we're short on time, I also take a quicker walking tour to the opera house and botanical garden. So it's a good thing to do just to get familiar and to see what's out there, but you don't really need it if you'll be staying in the circular key area, which I did. I stayed at a Marriott. I do have another video on that that talks all about that. And it was super centrally located. And that's where I stayed when I wasn't needing this bus on the second day. Casino. Next, I head to the beautiful Botanical Gardens, which is right by the Sydney Opera House. It's to the right of it, and you can simply walk there around the harbor, veer right, and you can't miss it. This is the entrance. It's fairly large. And I could say you could spend, you know, a few hours here.
pretty park. It goes on for quite a ways. It's very peaceful here. They don't allow dogs. Interesting statue. I would recommend coming here either late afternoon or maybe early morning. The hop on hop off bus does let you off there. If I were you and planning a vacation, I mean, it's super important to have some kind of physical activity before you start your trip because there's a lot of walking everywhere you go. So I am a proponent of that. So get into a walking regimen before you leave the house. Let me do some bamboo here. That little hut is made of stones. Lots of chairs or benches to sit. It's not chaotic. I, think I notice a lot of people, local people, either jogging or walking, talking business, maybe they're on their lunch break or something. This is the Conservatory of Music. Some open space. The hop on hop off bus stops here, but it makes so many stops before it gets here that it's almost easier just to walk from the opera house, is how I look at it. Government house. I think you have to pay for them. These gates are really fancy. Nice. This garden is super long and you can spend hours here, but I've seen probably a third of it. A lot of these flowers I recognize from the west coast of California. This is the European culinary herbs. I stopped in here and I got this homemade lemon iced tea. It's really good. As the sun sets, I'm heading to a special event, the Sydney Opera House 50th birthday bash. But it is at that time of that five o'clock hour where it's so, so hot. I can't wait till the, the sun sets in there. They had lots of parties and people really gathered for this event. The Sydney Opera House was open until three o'clock for the public, but it was by reservation only. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to get into that, but I did see everything around it. Take a look at what was happening. To the right is the Sydney Opera House. So now I see it's called a gold party is happening, and that's why everything's closed off. This must be quite a place to have a New Year celebration. I know I always see that on television and I can see why people come here. It's very full of energy. A lot of uh, different people from all over the world are here. Beautiful place, but there's the opera house, the bridge, my ship, 
and then my hotel's back that way. <laughs> Larry, you missed it. I think you would have liked it here. such a nice feeling to see the Sydney Opera House from the early morning on the ship around 5 30 a.m. when we were pulling into port to see that beautiful structure and then on the same day to actually witness the sunset at the same spot it was um, something that I won't forget it was so beautiful and I think if you do have an opportunity do stay over a night because it's it's so much fun to be walking around there. There's so much going on and you just feel like you're part of something. And even though I was traveling solo, it didn't feel like it because there was so much happening all around me. So this solo trip around Sydney isn't just a journey through the streets. It is a testament to how accessible and enjoyable solo travel can be. And if you are curious about my stay at the Marriott or my experiences on Royal Caribbean's Brilliance of the Seas, check out my playlist for more insight. I've had such a good time here in, in Sydney, Australia. Um, the whole trip was great. It was the 17 days, Honolulu, we went to the French Polynesia, and then to New Zealand and here. Kind of sad that I'm not staying a little longer because it's such a far away place to get to. It's just, it's its, its own little world. And, and so for that, it's, that's pretty exciting for me. I This will be my 66th country that I've visited. And every place has something to offer. This is very, the weather is perfect, so I'm in the beginning of spring, it's October, and it was 87 degrees yesterday, so this was kind of a shock that we're back into summer here, and uh, people are all out at night, and everybody's relaxed and enjoying the music, and there's the Sydney show at night, and so many different eateries to eat at, and I ended up going to a burger place, and I think I'm showing this in the video, and I started out just by myself, but I ended up meeting a couple, a retired couple that are from Melbourne. It just so happened we started to talk because they were on the cruise too, and they were spending a night, and so before you know it, we're talking, we're having a good conversation, and we're like, wow, we should have met before on the ship. So that's just how it is when you travel, especially on a cruise. People are so up for being friendly and social and even though I'm a solo traveler it didn't even feel like I was I, I honestly I think I tried to show you that in my videos how you connect your commonalities and so this lady happened to be a transplant from New Jersey and she'd been living here for 39 years and, and she had a, a, a lounge pass for Qantas that she wasn't going to be using and it's going to expire next month and she said would you like to uh, have this you can have it tomorrow before you go on your trip so Hilga if you're watching I thank you it was uh, um, just a, a pleasant, really a nice day. I, I had a good time. The, the cruise on the bay was so much fun and the, the hop on hop off bus, you get to see a lot of different areas you would normally not be able to walk around to. I didn't go to the Bondi beach, but like I say, I did the cruise around the bay. So that was, I saw a little bit of beaches here and there, but what a beautiful place. I've had a great time. I have plenty of, of uh, videos on the brilliance of the seas, how my trip fared and what I did, how it went as a solo traveler. So make sure you check that out and if you have found this helpful informative or you've learned something please make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing i do really appreciate you watching thank you so much and until next time